Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Vicky3 Academy. I'm Walker, and here we are on We Play Games discussing interest groups and ideologies sort of as a refresh. So interest groups and ideologies are going to be the like really, really important meat when it comes to defining the way that your government functions. Um, the interest groups themselves are these little bubbly things, and what they what they represent are a collection of pops that, for whatever reason, think that the uh, ideologies that the interest group naturally supports, modified by their their politician their their political leader who's going to have some popularities and a personal interest a personal ideology um not to mention some character traits and all these things are going to combine together to have an influence on which sort of pops are attracted to which interest groups um and then from there the way that political power is distributed in your country um so this this page is really important and you should get um familiar with understanding it and the implications thereof so what is an interest group um, composed of? As I mentioned, they've got they've got these ideologies. These ideologies are going to tell you which laws the interest group supports right now. And what that means is, if there's like um, a law that's currently on the books, like let's say that we were we're working with uh, Jacques Lafitte uh, here in in France, and we wanted to change a law towards something. Um, so they the Orleanist party strongly endorses. Um, laissez-faire. So we, if we wanted to move into laissez-faire, uh, we would want to associate with the industrialists, right? Because they are in favor of that law, which means that their clout, because they are in government, right? Because that's a prerequisite. They need to be in government and they need to be in favor of a change in a law. And if they're changing their law, I keep doing that. If they, it, It's the symbol. It's the symbol. Uh, if they keep changing their law from interventionism uh, to laissez-faire, the industrialists will support it. But then anyone who's down here is going to be able to use their political clout to block it, which is where you're going to get your passage versus your stall chance from. Um, and then the stall chance, that's going to, originally it's only going to come from the other uh, parties in government who oppose the change. So in this case, we would see that laissez-faire is going to be opposed by the landowners, the trade unions, and the rural folk. But the trade unions and the rural folk are not in government, so they can't oppose it. But if the landowners were to create a, um, a political movement, which is what you see over here sometimes when you're like, oh my god, the, the civil war is about to break out because there's a political movement to preserve slavery in the United States, um, that's where that's where that that stall chance on the law can come from. So just be aware that kicking people out of your government doesn't necessarily mean that they can't block the law changes. So that's the ideologies are going to determine what laws that they are in, in favor of, um, but where they get this power from, and therefore the main bulk of their ability to modify the laws, you know, not just be in favor of it, but to actually implement that change. It's going to come from this, from clout. So clout is why pops are kind of inextricably linked to ideologies and uh, interest groups, um, because the, the pops are the source of the political strength of the ideologies and the interest groups. Um, it, it comes from the political strength of votes in an election if you have a democracy, as well as the wealth of the pops associated with that interest group, and then a, a small little bonus per politically active pop based off of the average wealth. So the wealthier they are, the, the more each one will count. Um, so what that should tell you, sort of like as a, a meta, is that the more democratic your society becomes, the less these votes from wealth, are, are, or the, the strength from wealth is going to matter, and the more the strength from an election is going to matter. So if you if you become very liberal in return, in, in uh your democratic system, you should expect the the lower class um, interest groups to become stronger. How are uh, pops attracted to interest groups? So they're attracted to interest groups based off of a couple of different things. Um, they can be based off of the population type. It can sometimes be restricted by the population type. It like you see here that it says it has to be at least a capitalist, an engineer, or a shopkeeper. That means that if you have um, none of those pop types, that this this interest group is going to be very very weak. So for instance, in Japan, I I, I just I'm going to drill this down over and over again. It's not that it's necessarily a bad thing. The interest the, the this is a very powerful interest group, but 
you have to respect how unbelievably small um this population type is in japan right like you don't have you don't have mercantilism so you can't you can't rely on trade to bolster anybody um you don't have industry and so you don't have industrialists and that's just sort of like the nature of the game that the interest groups that you have access to are going to come from the pop types that you have um so industrialists these guys they have to be one of those and then they would be attracted based off of the popularity of Jacques Lafitte versus the popularity of the other leaders who could attract those pop types right so the shopkeepers are going to be split between um the industrialists and the petite bourgeoisie uh, with the modifier that the petite bourgeoisie have to belong to a primary culture in their home country it's because of the like pseudo xenophobic nature of it um they are bonus to be attracted if they're a shopkeeper and then where they are employed is also going to help increase their attraction so you see there's like a lot of different things that are going to modify the attraction of a pop beyond simply the profession um but the profession is gonna gate some things so you need to be aware of that and you need to be aware that um generally speaking urban pop types are going to be attracted to different um interest groups than rural pop types and so the the where you spend your construction points is going to have a huge impact on what interest groups are important in your country because of course they are you're building up either the the city or the or the countryside that of course is going to have a huge impact on the the political strength of your ideologies um so this this personal ideology thing is going to be one of these x factors sort of hanging over the 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 entire thing here because sometimes these are controllable i do show off in the um i think it's in the standard of living video that oh no it's the landowner battle video that you can do uh like corn laws if you have a powerful landowner and you and you don't have um serfdom and you want to go into laissez-faire um some because that'll let you get like a specific ideology but oftentimes you do not have control over the specific ideology of the leaders here and so you need to be very very aware of like what is what is going on here like are these are these things modifying anything or not because traditionalist is like the, on a on a catholic church kind of doesn't matter it just means that like they can't have a more useful ability here but like reformer can on a on an, an industrialist can be a big deal because if you can keep this guy alive late enough into the game that you can do children's rights having your industrialist be in favor of of uh children's rights rather than opposed to them is it is almost as good if not better um than having your landowner be in favor of getting rid of of uh peasant uh peasant levies but in this case they are in favor of cultural exclusion instead of racial segregation wow yeah i mean that's why we're that's why we're down here but like that can be a, a really really big deal and so pay attention to the ideologies of the characters that you currently have on the field but also pay attention to the the ideologies of the, the leaders that you have over here because the personal ideologies that they have are gonna kind especially in a democracy they're gonna they're gonna influence the outcome of your um parties here because these personal ideologies can help bring parties together and so you need to be really careful about that um i would i would personally just watch the, the i have a a parties video about that about party formation um but there's also just a great Wiki, uh, wikipedia article on online i'll just i'll link that that's what you want to watch or listen to or, or read um because party formation is very important and it is going to be heavily influenced by these these ideologies so you know when you're when you're recruiting leaders pay attention to not only the um the interest group that they're associated with but also their personal belief system because like if you want to stay as a monarchy then recruiting an armed forces monarchist is a royalist is pretty good right whereas if you want to become a, a council republic recruiting a nihilist for the armed forces is pretty good right the this is this is important these are important decisions that you have to make in victoria 3 in regards to these sorts of things um and some of them are going to be controllable and some of them aren't and gun and the really good ones the really important ones like legitimacy and stuff like that are going to be mostly controllable with a little bit of like randomness in regards to this stuff because I, I i don't know if i went over it but legitimacy that's coming from your your clout you just mouse over it um clout and the uh, head of state interest group 
because of the the nature of the laws here. The nature of the laws are going to determine the legitimacy, and the legitimacy in turn is going to determine the speed with which you're going to be able to roll on your on your law changes. So, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of complexity in the system, but I I think that the more that you come to to understand, um, like kind of not just the the interest group as a mechanical thing, but also as a, a narrative thing, like the, the pops who are going to associate with it and why and where they come from and what they are employed doing. Um, I think the more that you start to conceptualize that and understand like, okay, yeah, these are, these are the pre-industrial and these are the um, time agnostic and uh, these are the industrial. And this is a, like a pseudo um, time fixed social uh interest group i think the more that you start to understand those things and the forces and the way they interact with each other i think the easier uh you're you're gonna grow a, a country here in victoria 3 because they 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 really are testing us this is a history test and i'm, I'm gonna do my best to make sure that everybody gets an a minus on it so that's what the the video series is about um i hope that that you agree that that's what we're accomplishing here um if not that's okay but uh, you know, let me know if you have any questions. I, I love I love making videos in response to things. That's um that's one of my very favorite video types. Okay, that's Walker. Take care.